it's in. On your radio, on your TV and online at syn.org.au. My name is Sally White and I am the president at Syn Media. And without community radio, I wouldn't have my job, my friends, or really a sense of where I fit in the world. I started at Syn to learn how to be a journalist. I did that pretty quickly and then stuck around because I loved the people that were here and I love the whole idea of giving a voice to people that don't already have You're listening to Sin 90.7. You're listening to Sin 90.7. You listen to Liam and Jeff in the morning. We're going to talk a little bit about sports today on Sin 90.7 FM. Hey, Liam, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Really good. So, Liam, what are we going to be talking about today? Oh, we're going to go through round 18. We're going to talk about the common medal, the brown low. Bit of this, bit of that. Yeah, cool. And we'll be talking a lot about that stuff right after this song break. Listen to Liam and Jeff on C90.7. Hey, listen to Liam and Jeff on C90.7, bringing you sport uh, at 10 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, hey, Liam, so let's talk about round 18 in the AFL of football. Oh, it was a really important round, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And I really think... In terms of percentage and a ladder placement, really, um, really effective and really changed oh, around. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll start off on Friday night. Yep. With um, North Melbourne defeating Collingwood, which I think most people would have tipped Collingwood, even though um, Collingwood's outside the eight and North Melbourne's inside the eight. Yep. But it was a good um, 124 to 84 point victory. Uh, we go down the Saturday when you got Swans just getting over the line with Cal- against Carlton. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more, a little bit more about that game. I reckon Carlton in the last this game and who did they play last week? Carlton, uh, Carlton West Coast, West Coast. That's some good games in the last couple of rounds. And I think. Sydney's had a few poor ones the last few rounds as well. Yeah, I really. Feel like so. how Geelong's just got out of their slump, and we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Um, over in the Gold Coast, where I just come back from. Yeah. Um, Gold Coast defeated Frio, 105 to 81. I'll talk about Frio a bit later. Yeah. Um, West Coast just got over the line against Melbourne by six points. In the Perth, West Coast, I think we both agree that they're the most um, underperforming top eight side. Yeah, I really do think so as well, yep. Um, Geelong got over Adelaide by 30 points. Yeah, we also saw that coming from the last clear, really hit the pedal down on that one. But Adelaide let the top two spots slip. If they won, they would have been a game clear on second spot, and they got a good yeah. one home. And that that's that would be paid off for the GWS Giants. My God, yes. they're in second place at the moment. Um, another team that let a top two spot go was the Doggies. Yeah. Um, losing by 15 points to the Saints, who's keeping their top eight hopes alive. Yeah. So the game next week against North Melbourne will be massive. So the Saints are playing North Melbourne next week. Yep. I really do think... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip the Saints for that one. It's Boomer's... The Boomer's record-breaking 427th game. And he levelled Tucky. Right no, he's passing, game. yeah. He levelled he Tucky last week. Yeah, so he's, he's passing this week. Passing this week. Um, on Sunday, unfortunately for you, you Bomber fan, mm-hmm. Brisbane defeated Essendon. 128 And we're, we're talking about that. We are talking about that when we get back. <laughs> um, Hawthorne are now two games clear after demolishing Richmond by yeah. 70 points. And in the final game of the round, the Giants are now second on the ladder after defeating Port Adelaide by 19 points in their first ever win in um, South Australia. Oh, really? That's nice. I want to talk a little bit about the Collingwood North Melbourne game. Um... What do you did you uh, catch the game on Friday night? Yeah, I watched it. Yep. So, what did you, did you did you find any kind of differences in North Melbourne's play from against Collingwood compared to the last couple of weeks? Anything different exactly? Oh, because in my opinion, just watching that game, just a couple of things. One was um, I thought Magic Door was a little bit more influential than he has in his past couple of yeah. games. I think he's really he's done well to control his agility, control his speed, and not just jump at everything. And I also think that. Uh, the small guys like Wells, Thomas, and Harvey really just switched it on. Oh, definitely. Um, I also like Petrie. He back in form. Yep. Uh, Frito and Tarrant down back. Yeah. It's a winning combination. Oh, Tarrant, exactly. He's a much better backline player than he is a forward line yeah. player in my, in my books. Mm. But I really do think, uh, let's talk a little bit more for, about Frito. People, a lot of people are saying that this is probably Frito's best year that oh, he's he ever had. Been, yeah. He's really good. He's, I find him more confident. Watching him against... The Magpies and against Port Adelaide. What I've found is he's really starting to take the game on. Oh, yeah. Through the, through the corridor. That's good exactly. to see. It's really good to see he's take the game on. Yeah. Um, we're going to the Coleman now. Um, after kicking three goals this weekend, Josh Kennedy has jumped to jumped in the lead with 58. Yeah. Buddy Franklin's on fourth. I mean, sorry, on second with four goals, two. Now 57. 
and Tom Lynch from the Gold Coast is still hanging in there after a four goals one effort against the Dockers on mm-hmm. 55. Isn't it good to see a tight common metal race? Yeah, better than the old days when it used to be like 100 to 80 back mm. in the adult days. It's but, uh, it was like last year, Josh Kennedy, around this time last year, we knew Josh Kennedy was going to win, but anyone can win this. Yeah, You know, exactly. a good game from Josh, um, Tom Lynch and a bad game from Kennedy and Franklin. Yeah. Um, well, there's a lot of, you can go either way. The Eagles form is a little bit up and down. And what yeah. I found with uh, Josh Kennedy is when the, Eagle, uh, when the Eagles are up and down, so is he. He doesn't really play good without his team. He's um, one point, I think, four touches in the grand final last year kind of yeah. shows what happened. So this shows that if the Eagles, if Josh Kennedy is a legitimate run to get the Coleman medal, he needs his club to lift and to give him good balls in his, inside the 450. Yeah. Um, go to the AFL.com, Brownlow Predictor. Yep. He's got Patrick Dangerfield and Luke Parker both on 21 votes. Mm-hmm. Dustin Martin on 20 and Rory Sloan and Jack Stevens has jumped up now after getting three votes on 19 yeah and the Nav Rising Star nomination for round 18 is Ryan Clark from North Melbourne Ryan Clark he's done pretty well and guys we'll be having more talk about football with Liam and Jeff on Sin 90.7 after the song break hey listen Liam and Jeff on Sin 90.7 having a little bit of talk about football now, uh, Liam, moving on to uh, the game that came on this past Sunday. The Battle of the Spoon. The Battle of the Spoon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I was at the game, 34,000 people, good atmosphere. Um, I want to talk about a little, little bit more about this game. So the Bombers went in as favourites against the Lions. They lost terribly, uh, score being 12-19-91. That's kind of a year there. Against uh, 28-128. It's pretty simple, isn't it? It was goal kicking in the end that lost it for the Bombers. Goal kicking... And I've got to say, pure hype for this man, my, my pure love for the Brisbane captain, Tom Rockcliffe. Oh, exactly. He he stood up as all captains and should. W- what, what a week, what a month he's had, it, actually, with Lepper constantly under scrutiny. Then um, Tom Rockcliffe got called Ready fat. Yeah. Uh, most of his game, he gets pretty much, his average is around 40 possessions a game. Really? Mm, he's really, he's the absolute superstar of the competition, Tom Rockcliffe. Mm. Now, what do you think the Lions' problem is? Because I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of potential there in the players. I think I think Green's a terrific player. Zorko, I think, is amazing. Who's that player that came from Geelong? Christensen? Has he been playing lately? Uh, he's out for the year. He's out for uh, the year. Christensen, Beams, um, Tom Bell from Cal- um, they got, they got Carlton. The, they got the Bean, Bean brothers, though, they? Yeah. They got, they got a... We didn't really talk about this because they're Brisbane, and like Brisbane always kind of left in the dark with football. But they actually got a terrific list. It's just I think it's just injury that got them in the end. Injuries and the... Like they're missing the little things, you know. Their key forwards are still young. Their key backs are still young. Yeah. Um, you know, it's up to Rockcliffe, Hamley, Zorko, um, Rich to carry the team, and it's only so much they can do. Yeah. Now I'm going to throw a question out to you. Uh, you're scouting for the Lions. Oh, this is hypothetical. You're not really scouting for the Lions. You're scouting for the Lions. Um, what would you look be looking for? What do you think they really need? I think, in my opinion, I think they really need a really strong fullback. I'm also thinking they should go down the GWS route here when it comes to getting a 32-year-old defender, someone who's at that last few years of their career, just to help out the young defenders and the, the young forwards. I would like them to get. I want. I would love them to take the scouts seriously. I would love them yeah. to get a, a legitimate, good trade. You know what I mean? Don't don't go for the 32-year-olds. Get someone a little bit longer. Get a 26-year-old if you need mm. to. Then like that would be good. Get well, get serious for a second. Here. Well, if I was Brisbane, um, Alex Savani from Fremantle was out of contract. Um, he's always been Freo's third best defender. Yeah. Um, but he's really good. And you hear his name all the time when he, when it comes to good news. Yeah. He's always there. He's always playing good football. Yeah. So if I was um Brisbane Lions, get him. Yeah. Now I was watching uh the game live. I, I love to go to the game because I think it's really it's really good to really see the game play when you see it live. Yeah. Um, I was watching the game. Now I want to just this is stunning to me. Now if you really look at it, the score was twelve nineteen ninety one losing to Brisbane twelve twenty eight hundred twenty eight. It was goal kicking in the end that lost it for the Bombers. Nineteen behind at an AFL level is nothing short of appalling. Oh, the goal kicking is really bad. It is terrible. This wasn't. There's a couple of reasons. I've got so much reasons why the, they missed the goals, and I can I'll list them for you towards the end. But overall, you got AFL players, not even with bombers, with all clubs, standing directly in front of goal, forty meters out, easy kick, but they they're missing it terribly. Um, was the, was the roof closed? Pardon me. Was the roof closed? The roof is always closed. He has said perfect conditions. No so winds. no wind. No wind. How do you? No rain. 
How do you miss? Especially Eddie at the stadium. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you right now how I know exactly why not only the Bombers, but all teams are missing terribly uh, in front of goals now. It's not like the old days when you can just click it like that. Oh, yeah. This is the reason why all players today are overcomplicating their kick. This is why you see great players that are international players like Collingwood. Uh, he, they got Cox over there. And also you've got Zach Tui with the Carlton Blues. This is why these guys are going to so natural kicks at the ball because they don't have any bad habits. Now, this is why Aussie players are kicking badly these days is they're overcomplicating it. They've always got some little stutter, just like Josh Kennedy. They're always moving it slightly to the right, slightly to the left. They're always overcomplicating their kick to goal, and that's why they're missing Liam. That is exactly why they're missing. They're trying to be like the the best forwards, Buddy Franklin, whose For kicking's always come under the question, especially, you know. Yeah, yeah. He has a l- large run out towards the left because he's a left footer, and that's how he kicks. Well, sometimes he can kick seven, one goal or seven, yeah. which he has on one occasion. Another thing is, I saw this in Browns kicking, especially from the Bombers, is they're trying to imitate Brendan Favola. Do you remember how Brendan Favola used to kick a ball? Oh, yeah. He used to have, I think it was his right hand was towards the bottom of the ball, left hand was top of the, uh, towards the uh, upper half, and he used to kick. That's hurting them. Another thing is, is um, especially for Joey Danaher, they're dropping the ball too early. They are dropping the ball way too early, and that's copy, costing costing them kick for ball, and that's that's what's causing them to miss the goals all all the time. Um, uh, while you're talking about bad kicking, I'll give you a nice, a good start of bad kicking. Yep, sure. So, in 1977, Hawthorne played St Kilda down at Old Princess Park, and they kicked 25, 41, 191. Oh, when was what year was this? 1977. If it was like 1901, I would have guessed it, but uh, not 19. So that's and terrible. And St Kilda, to their credit, kicked 16, 7, 103. Yeah. But 25, 41. That's terrible. That's a poor. That's even worse uh, than today. <laughs> when I used to play junior footy, um, the coach made us run a lap for every point we kicked in the game. Wow. Well, Imagine really? doing 41 <laughs> laps. Oh. Uh, <laughs> also talking about points, Melbourne as well lost lost their game because they're kicking. Yeah. You know, exactly. 10 goals, 6, 66 at West Coast, 8 goals, 12 Melbourne. Well, it isn't as bad, though, but it's certainly cost them. I think another thing is, and I've called this with Melbourne's gameplay, especially with Paul Ruse, is I think in today's game, no one's really willing to put a strong midfielder in the middle and run it through the corridor. Yeah. And now, I know it, it's a it's a very dangerous play to do, because if you turn it over, it can hurt you terribly. Oh, it can kill you. But the thing is, right, with those types of goals, uh, so with those types of uh, run through the middle, it hits you right in the middle of the goal square, and it really opens the job up. So if I was a full four, tell them to lead up through the middle. The last time to do that was Geelong when they won their three premierships. Yeah, you didn't lead up through the middle. Give your forwards good opportunities, and if you know they're a left kicker, running through the le- running through the right side, and like really try to give them a good shot at goal. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, now every team decides like to go boundary. Yeah, so that's a strong play. Unless, unless you're skillful as Hawthorne, it doesn't always work out. Yeah. And even so, go go short. Give them some space mm. to bring the ball back. You know what I mean? Too too often these days they're going straight towards the boundary line. Surely it favours Eddie Betts. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie Betts is terrific from that angle. So is uh, like Lindsay Thomas. Maybe small forward. Yeah, Zach Merritt is really trying to prove himself in that area. But it's not it's not good for everyone. Zach Merritt is God. He is. He's very good. But my point is being, seeing as Lundberger... He tried to take a kick from the boundary line. can't take that kick from the boundary line. I know Ruckman can. He can't. And he tried to drop punt it from the boundary line. Like, I don't know what the angle was, but it was a terrible angle to drop punt mm. it. And got an in the full. But yeah, Essendon should have won that game. And they should have kicked straight in. And now, the problem is they're, gonna get, they're probably going to win the winner's spoon, get the number one draft pick, and they might even trade it off. I wouldn't trade off a number one draft pick. No, 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 no. If anything, you know what? I reckon Zaharakis is a great player. But I would, I would trade him in for a couple draft picks. You can get two well, draft picks out of that kid. Freya, Freya wants him. I want him. Freya will be will be good. Or we can get someone out of Freya. The, the story about Hill. Pardon me, sorry, I got that wrong. I was going to say Hill wants to come to Melbourne, but it's actually his brother wants yeah. to go to the. Oh, I'm going to talk about that when I talk about how to fix Fremantle. No? And we'll be talking about that, guys, after the break. We listen to Liam and Jeff on C90.7. Yeah, listen Liam and Jeff on C90.7. We'll talk a little bit about football now. Uh. Liam, you've been watching intently the Fremantle Dockers this year. Yes, I was actually at the Gold Coast on the weekend. Or should I say painfully? Uh, go on. But uh, now, so, it's nothing so short to say that it's been an absolute shocking year for the Fremantle Dockers, finishing first and the last year. And uh, having a terrible season this year, not going to make finals. But do you have the solution for their terribleness? I have a query or theory on how to fix the club. 
as everyone knows, as uh, the big news last week or well, this weekend with Bradley Hill rumored to become the one to come home in the Frio. Yes, that was a big rumor. Um, also, Cam McCarthy is a shoe in from what happened to last year and this year to come to Frio from GWS. All right. Um, Shane Kirsten from um, Geelong. He's having a stellar season over there. Yeah, I think he was the reason why Chapman left because they were going to give him his position. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, he's rumored to also want to come down. And um, Rory Lobb, the big Ruckman forward for GWS. Right, yes, yes, yes. Which, also, uh, which will go, so if we can get three, if we, um, if we can get Hill and McCarthy. Yes. Be good, but I wouldn't mind getting Kirsten. And on the way out, we got Pavlich who's retiring. Yes. Um, Chris Main's rumored to leave. Is he the captain? Uh, no, Monday's the captain. Monday's the captain, right, yeah. Um, Clark's rumored to leave. Langdon hasn't signed yet. Yes. And he's a Victorian, so... Uh, Moabito should retire after he just cannot get back on the track. The Boer, Mozungu, Pierce, all good servants of the club, but I think their time's up. Yes. Um, and... We've got a player, Michael Aptness, who is a good forward forward Ruckman. Yes. If we can drop him for Bradley Hill, something Hawthorne might want. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it depends. Isn't isn't uh, the Hawthorne Hill coming towards yeah, the Dockers? Yeah, I'm thinking that should be the swap there. No, no, no. I think he wants to play with his brother. Yeah, that's... Mm. So, um, it'll, be, it'll be fun to see if they want to play together or if they're just homesick. So, that'll be interesting. Um, so, I've got... Unfortunately for players like Michael Johnson, who's been an All-Australian case of the club, um, I think him and Zach Dawson should retire yeah. at the end of the year to give Alex Pierce and Sam Collins a chance to be the two tolls in the free back line. Uh, Matthew Tabner is a good second forward. You know the forwards that kick 30 goals a year compared to the ones that kick 60? Right, he's a Scotty Lucas of the Scotty Lucas and Matthew exactly, Lloyds. Exactly, yeah. yes. Um, and so I think if we get Cam McCarthy, Cam McCarthy should be our number one forward uh, with Matthew pa- uh, Matthew Tabner on the back line. Yeah. Um, I'm loving having well up forward with Walters and Ballantyne. Yeah. Um, we'd love to see Bradley Hill, Stephen Hill, and Harley Bernal in that midfield. Yeah, the exactly. The pace out there. I'll keep Mundy as captain. I would definitely and then have Sanderlands and Fife and Lock and Hill, Connor Blakely, all that in the midfield. Mm-hmm. We've got a good team. They have a good team in the Fremantle Dockers. They just need to um, be able to work together. Here's the thing, right? Now, I've I've narrowed down the Fremantle Dockers' is a terrible season down to this. A, it's definitely confidence. They were hit hard early, and they never really recovered from that first loss. Yeah. And the second thing is, I reckon injury really got them in the end. Because they, 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 lo- they lost some amazing players. Harley, uh, Harley Bennell, he's out. Michael Barlow's out, Michael Johnson's out, uh, Nate, Nate Five, Aaron Sanderlands. They've lost uh, some... Hayden Ballantyne just went out recently. They've lost some amazing players, and you can't really just say it's Ross Lyon's fault, because when you lose key, key players like those guys, you're bound to struggle. Mm. I also think... I don't know, have you ever watched um, Open Mic? Love that show. Uh, Billy Bounce was on it a f- um, last year, talking about how in 96, after Geelong lost their fourth grand final in a matter of 10 years yeah and the confidence of we don't want to lose another grand final yeah yeah the, uh, yeah, the whole oh uh, can we win one you know Frio went from winning a grand final they're going out in straight sets to winning f- minor premiership but not making a grand final mm-hmm. the are we good enough would have definitely gone inside their head yeah, well it's a definite mental thing well they do have psychologists nowadays but they, what they didn't have back then but I think this whole thing is strictly a leadership coaching Problem. It's something yeah. that it's something that Ross Lyon needs to address. He's an aggressive coach, which is why I love him. But sometimes your coaches should just come out, put you back on track, and tell you what to do. But with all these injuries, like even Alex Pierce is out. Alex Pierce is an amazing player for the Fremantle Dockers. Oh, future All Australian backman, definitely. Definitely. But I mean, it's the whole when you lose this much players in odd positions, your structure goes out the window. Your gameplay goes out the window when you have a team like that. I'll give you an example of our season. Um, on the weekend, Shane Yarren played his first game, 27-year-old um, forward. Yeah. Kicked his first goal. You think, uh, the players are happy, everyone got around him. Yeah. But his emotion when he kicked it was non-existent. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you're 27 years old, you've gone, gone the hard way, and he really has. Um, I yeah. think he was out of jail for only two years now. Mm. So he's really had a hard road. Yeah. And he showed really zero emotion, and that kind of just sums up through the season. Yeah, in a way. But I think if Frio's going to... Like, I understand everyone Everyone says 
And it's a smart way to move that if you making a team, make a team that can play at every single round, which is obvious. You want to win every single Definitely, game. Definitely, yeah. However, I think for Fremantle's cases, um, they do they do need tools. Every team needs tools, and every team needs a big kind of player. But in thinking of Fremantle's case, they do need uh, someone with a good set of hands. Not only that, someone who can run. Because the, the thing with the main stadium is, is it's not like any other stadium in which it, it's massive in length. Um, that that is a good point, mm. but might not be the case because after next year they move into the new Perth Stadium. Is that being built now? When is that? Yeah, it's currently built? being built. Yeah, and it's going to open. Um, they say it could also host a final next year. That far? Is it going to hold like sixty thousand people? Yeah, that's really cool. It's going to be a massive stadium, which is good for them. Um, actually, talking about Frio. I've did some research, and we are currently the fifth longest current Premiership drought. Yeah. Behind uh, Bulldogs. That's like fifty-eight years, I think. Yeah. yeah. Fifty-four, they won their well first and only. Yeah. Uh, Melbourne, so since sixty-four. 64. St Kilda since sixty-six, and Richmond since nineteen eighty. Yeah, we well, can't really give that to Freebird because they they weren't in the league to what ninety-five. Yep. And that brings me to my next point. We are six for the longest time to win a first Premiership, yeah. behind Geelong. Footscray, Hawthorne, North Melbourne, and St Kilda. Yeah, because North didn't win there till the seventies. Yeah, and uh, took St Kilda six, almost seventy years. Took North Melbourne fifty exactly. Yeah, and uh, we are kind of, as you know, the longest interstate team to go from starting to, to winning the grand final. Yeah, we about Sydney, considering because Sydney went from South Melbourne to Sydney, so I'm not really counting Sydney. Yeah, exactly. But so, not a good run. Hopefully, the Premiership will come on one day. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the Dockers now. You, know, you said earlier about uh, a lot of players retiring, a lot of players coming towards the end of the season. Now, I've seen too much times in the past when this occurs and they just have a young list, and that list just is terrible. Like, we haven't had a good li- We haven't had something like that with a Premiership since 93 with the Bombers. Now, as history told us, when that happens, who's the first to go? Your head coach. The head coach gets sacked instantly. So, do you think that Ross Lyon needs to pull an Al- Alistair Clarkson and just start trading in some good players, getting players out of there? Um, well, Ross Lyon won't go anytime soon. He's contracted to 2020, so if you really want to pay him out that much money. Oh, yeah, my God. Um, like I said, we want to get Kirsten, who's having a great season, mm-hmm. Rory Lobb, um, Cam McCarthy, Bradley Hill, all these really good players to go alongside the Lockie Wellers and the Connor Blakely, and hopefully Ed Langdon, even though I said he might leave. Mm. You don't want someone, he's a, you know, I think he got a bit of screwed out in that Rising Star nomination this week, personally. Yeah. But, so I think, it could even be one season. I think Freo could be up there next year. But as it stands right now, there's a lot of work to do at the club and I think getting rid of some of the older players from, so that's why I've kept a lot of people like Lee Spur, Mundy, yeah. Sandlin still, just have those older heads still there instead of getting rid of them all. Do you look for young players at the scouts or would you be looking at like the Gold Coast Academy and trying to get players out of that? Um, well, I would say looking for more local talent considering so many players these days just want to go home. Oh, yeah. And I don't think they realise Australian Football League is... You could, you've got a possibility to play all over Australia. Yeah. And I think the thing we don't really remember is that a lot of good players come around WA. Oh, They're a um, good source of players. Rioli, Franklin, just to name two. Oh, yeah. And I think Pavlidge was like originally from WA. No, he's South Australian. South Australian. Um, right, Simon yeah. Black. Simon Black with WA. In the good old days. Yeah. Uh, was a lot um, of great Harry players. Taylor and Alex Grant, two of the best defenders. I think you just need to get some incredible scouts and really put some effort into really what you want for your game. But if you just go, hey, give me plays, and it's going to wind up terrible. You, mm. need to, you need to get a, you need to really focus on a specific group, whether it be midfield, uh, forwards, defenders, and just try to go for that really key kind of group. Yeah. Oh, I think it'll work. Well, we're going to go to next um, talk about the big round ahead with the big milestone games and a really good story out from the Gold Coast. Yeah, and you're listening to Liam and Jeff on Sydney 90.7. You're listening to Liam and Jeff talking a little bit about football at the moment on Sydney 90.7 FM. Yes. What a big week we have this week. Um, yeah, massive. Three big games. Actually, four big games, but three massive ones with Bruma Harvey playing his 427th game, which is breaking the AFL, BFL all-time record. What's the record again? What's it? Uh, 400 426. Oh, yeah. Michael right. Tuck. Uh, Pavlich is playing his 350th. Yeah. Um, maybe he has a seven-goal game. He could kick his 700th goal. I'm surprised he's gone, gone, gone that long. He started when I started watching footy like 01. Uh, he started, yeah, 2000. But the fact is, you know, only recently started playing in finals and grand final. 
pretty hot ranking. Um, he, he is the heart and soul of the Fremantle Dolphins. Oh. Yeah. Um, Corey Emma is playing his three, 326th game, which is breaking into Geelong all time record. Yeah, it's like beating Brownless and Ablett and all that. Yeah. They play for a while. And also, from Geelong, Jimmy Bartel is playing his 300th game. Wow, big big round for the Caps. Um, how good are Bartel and Emma, do you think? Especially They're still in very those, good. The 07 to 011. Yeah, very instrumental. Bartel won the Brownlow in the middle of all that. Yeah, uh, all 2007. That, uh, 2007, during his premiership year. He's a really good player. We need more players like Bartel, running in head first, head over the ball. Oh, both highly underrated. Very underrated. Oh, yeah. No, no not, not so much Jimmy Bartel, I don't think. Uh, Corey Enright, yeah, probably. Oh, I don't think John could win all their premierships if um they were out. Really? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, probably, yeah. Um, I really did. Where, where's Enright playing again? Halfback? A halfback, yeah. Halfback. He was really instrumental. No one likes the Cats more than the Cats. You know what I mean? Oh, who doesn't? <laughs> I guarantee you all those hate, haters for Dangerfield in 2015. Yeah. Compared to this year. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very good. And uh, really excited for Bim and Harley. Been watching him my entire life. He's still watched it. Because my dad's a North Melbourne supporter. So I've gone to the games and seen uh, how he plays the game. So really good to see him breaking all the time record. Yeah, um, also like, and also in good news, um, the Gold Coast Suns and David Swallow, who's in their leadership group, um, actually called his teammates to do this to help look for the missing girl. Did you hear about the girl missing Gold yeah, Coast? Yeah, she went missing for 24 hours and they found her yesterday. Yeah, I think it's, it was one of those really good stories that, you know, that they even helped out the police. How did that happen? They just ran into the, uh, they ran into the, like, bushes with the cops and looked for her and yeah. stuff. Well, that's really cool. During their training as well. Yeah, they can, so that, which is good. Um, you say that every day. To go from good news to bad news, what about the Bulldogs and their two injuries on the weekend? Oh, my God. Oh, that was... That makes you cringe when you look at it. Even describing it makes you cringe. Oh, poor Mitch Wallace. Mitch Wallace. So what basically happened was he was running, kicked his own foot, broke it that, and then it hit the ground after he kicked it and then broke it a second time. Oh. And the expression on his face was is pure agony. Pure agony, and not only that, is he knew it was over. He knew he can't come back from that. Nah. He'll probably play football in a year or so. He'll probably play towards the end of next season. I don't even think then. I think he's going to be out the entire season. Oh, wow. And now um, Jack Webpath as well did his ACL, so. And he's had a good season as well for the Bulldogs up forward. Then that Bulldogs and Kilda, because I was watching both the Geelong Adelaide game, I was watching the Bulldogs and Kilda game, both games. Uh, no, actually, I'd rather the St Kilda game because that was just so exciting. The atmosphere was up. Looking at the game, though, you just know that the injuries is what got the Bulldogs in the end because they completely lost their run. Doggies um, have joined the list of mine of North Melbourne and West Coast. Dropping out in the top eight. Um, teams that can't win the Premiership. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. Now, let's talk a little bit more about that. Now, why is... why with the Especially with the North Melbourne Football Club and the Bulldogs, we've seen it time and time again. Why do they keep... Just losing consistency. Why do they keep losing it? Uh, well, doggies uh, injuries. You know, they, they, once a player comes, you know, one player comes back, two goes out. Yeah. yeah. Um, North Melbourne has just they've come up against good teams. Which is, is we've seen it way too much times in the past. It's always happened with North Melbourne. And so actually, when I started of you, you said to me, "What do you think North Melbourne going to win the premiership?" I'm like, "No, they're going to make it to round like 15 or something, and they're going to lose like six in a row." I was just after last one in a row. <laughs> um, and then West Coast just. They're not like they were last year. Like yes, Frio weren't not like they were last year, but neither yeah. West Coast. Yeah, it's a whole lot of a confidence and b they they actually reshuffle their list a little bit. Yeah, and whenever you reshuffle a list, you tend to just lose a little bit out of it. Um, and then you got a team. So I have yeah North Melbourne Bulldogs and West Coast, the teams that can't win. Yep. I have Adelaide in my maybe pile because their best can match it and their worst can't. Yep. Um, but interesting, GWS, they are currently second on the ladder, five games to go. All they got to do is keep winning. Yeah, they do. Uh, they've got a cool couple of games coming up. Who do they have? they got the Tigers at Manuka, I think. I really uh, Now, my tip is that the the uh, Giants will win that match just because Richmond really travelled well in, like, the Canberra and Darwin, in, like, those alternate stadiums. They don't really and um, well there. no Cochins, no, sorry, no, no Delidio, no Richmond. Yeah, so I do think that they won't do well for that game. And they've got... Do you know who they got up uh, after that game? Um, after that, they have Gold Coast up in Kurawa, up in the Gold Coast. Well, so what was that? Was that um, 
is that Gokko Stadium? Or they yep. go to an alternate stadium again. Alright, so Gokko Stadium. Yep. yep. Um, then they have West Coast and Frio both at home, and then they have North Melbourne at the Docklands. I, I can see them winning all those games. Yeah. I can um, see them winning all those well, games. All they need is the, yeah, your second with percentage, keep winning, and they could get a home final. Yeah. At the Butler Stadium. Now the only way they can lose that grant, they lose all that finals, is if they uh, get too ahead of themselves. That's why I think the coach should come out and say to them, guys. Keep your head down. Take it one game at a time. Well, that's why I think their their losses against Adelaide and Geelong were good, because both are very um, finalised games. Yes. During the season, and they've had usually with the way AFL seasons go, there's usually a um, story involved. Yes. Like last year, Hawthorne and West Coast had the, the good little rivalry between the season. Mhm. Um, 2014 and 2012 both had Sydney Hawthorne. Yep. Geelong and GWS seem like the story this year. Yes. But they probably won't play off in the grand final, but it'll be good to see, though. Yeah. Now, let's, uh, we're going to wrap up real quick. I uh, just want to ask a quick, quick question. Now, with the Giants, they've had a lot of great players this season that really stood up. I reckon Tom Scully stood up along with Phil Davis and Callum Ward. Is it uh, Caniglio or Canelio? Canelio. 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 And uh, Toby Green, I think, has had um, a pretty Dylan good Dylan Shields. Dylan Shields. Now, do you think, above all that, the real difference, difference maker that took him from just missing the eight to maybe making the top four is Stevie Johnson? Because he is just reborn. But his last few weeks have been... If he? Oh, he's really hasn't done well in the last few weeks. I think it's been a big difference, yes. Just a random club, because he wants to be a coach, and he's coaching them. Mm. Um, he'll sign another deal. He'll play 2017. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's done yet. Uh, also, I think the likes of Phil Davis pretty much playing a whole season for the first time and um, getting Ben Backman's. I like Joel Patful, the mm-hmm. two-time best first at um, Brisbane. Yes. I think they're just getting, they're getting little things right, which teams like Hawthorne do constantly. Look at them. They don't have rough head. But yes. they're getting goals from Bruce, Poropolo, Rioli, Gunston, Mitchell. Have, yeah, have they become a team like that? You know, like a team like if you're losing your best forward, someone's going to stand up and have the best game of their career. And that's what best teams do. Yeah, and that's what the Hawks have done for the last three years. Like, think of it, Ralph Ed's out, up comes Rioli. Uh, Gunston's out, Paul Wappler plays the game of his life. You know what I mean? Like, against mm. the Tigers. Like, they just, every, if any team can muster that out of their uh, players, they're set. They're set for oh, finals. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, well, after this, we'll go through who do you think... Hey, listen to Liam and Jeff with C90.7, talking a little bit about football at the moment. Uh, Liam, I'm going to run out the uh, show right now. Uh, what do you want to wrap up on? Uh, well, I don't want to think. There's five rounds to go. Yep. Really big five rounds. So who do you think is going to win the premiership? Uh, who do you think is going to be in the grand final? The Brownlow, Coleman, and the Rising Star winner. Well, if, this, if it stays the way it is... What's funny about this, if you, if you took the percentage out of it, um, the top four will be a top six, which is... I've never seen that in the... I can't, I can't remember the last time I saw that. It's going to go down in percentage. Uh, it's hard to say. I really want to say Hawthorne. But you don't know if they're going to pull a Brisbane. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to lose the last yeah. grand final. They'll make the grand final surely if they have a good list. If they take in any casualties, then everything's just going to go out the window. Um, actually, Clarkson already said he's going to best Hodge maybe next week, just to give yeah. him that best. So, I can't see anyone beating, uh, apart from the Swans, I really can't see anyone beating Hawthorne at the moment in the, in the granny. Um, what about Brownlow? Brownlow, you got to think that's going to go to Dangerfield. It's, it's either Dangerfield, Martin... Might come close. Uh, I reckon it's gonna come really close, down to a two or three kind of vote kind of thing. I'm gonna. I'm backing. I'm backing Dangerfield. Backing um, Coleman. Uh, fro- Franklin will just. He'll dominate towards the finals. He'll switch it on. He'll go. Okay, now it's time to get serious, and he'll. He'll. Block and um, that buzzing star. Uh, a lot of a lot of great players. I'm backing. I, w- I really want to say Razio Fantasia. If he can get. If he can get a good kind of couple games, he'll, he'll win it. Uh, for me, I've got um, Hawthorne to win the premiership. Yep. We great to see you for Pete. I know. I know. Is people don't want happen? to see you're, it. You're the, you're the stats um, guy. Collingwood between twenty-seven and thirty. Oh right. So so it hasn't happened in pretty much even our grandparents' lifetime. Yeah, so hundred years. <laughs> it'll be good to see though. As much as people don't want to see Hawthorne, they are the greatest team of this generation. They are. They are definitely. a fantastic unit, and they deserve to win. I would love to see GWS win. They won't make. I reckon they're gonna they're gonna get pretty scared if they win their first final. Yeah. Uh, I think the grand final I would be Sydney Hawthorne or Geelong Hawthorne. Uh, I'm going to Sydney Hawthorne if they can get a home final. Um, I think I have Dangerfield for the Brownlow. Uh, yep. Um, but I think Luke Parker, who's when we did the Brownlow predictor, is yeah. also on 21 votes. Um, yeah, I've got Col- Buddy Franklin win the Coleman and Jacob Weedering will win the Nab Rising Star. I like Jacob Weedering. 
So. What, a, what a good defender he is. He's lovely, and he's going to have a great future. Mm. Uh, guys, if you want to listen more to us, you can uh, listen to us tomorrow from 11 to 12. We'll be back on tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be good. So you listen to Liam and Jeff for C90.7. We'll see you guys tomorrow.